good morning. Welcome everybody to North Harrow Community Library YouTube channel. My name is Fiona. I'm one of the volunteers at the library. This morning, I'm joined by Palat Jury, who's going to talk to us about her poetry book, The Standards of Time. Good morning, Palak. Good morning. And welcome to our little chat this morning. So first of all, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and your connection to the library? Thank you, uh, Fiona, and I'm grateful to you and the library to, for this opportunity. I got involved with North Harrow Community Library from the pandemic times when, um, you know, we were at home and I was, um, well, I've been to the library before as a user a lot, but I got more involved during 2020 uh, when I was volunteering there as well. And when I wrote this book, um, you know, Kamal um, approached me saying that, you know, I could give a few books to the library and that they would love to do an interview. And I was very, very grateful. Uh, I think I built my connection up from there. Good. Very interesting. So it's always enthusiastic to have um, readers who use the library and then go on to write books. Is Have you been writing for long? Is this something that you've been doing for uh, so many years? Yeah. Yeah, I've been writing for about, I've I had my uh, blog for about 20 odd years now, but it had been very sporadic. Um, you know, it wouldn't be like uh, something I would be doing consistently because I'm a, a full-time accountant and, um, you know, tax uh, in tax industry, basically. So um, I've never had that much time. But when we were doing the lockdown, I started collating all of my writings over the years. And I started getting involved with more um, sort of workshops and learning more as well. So then that gave me the idea of trialing different things, entering competitions and, uh, you know, crafting uh, different kind of poetry. And then once I had built up a collection, I published my book. Interesting. So it's been a, a, a long iterative process. It wasn't an overnight thing that you did. Yeah. And so, um, so the, it, there are some lovely poems in here. There's um, a, a lot, I think, when people read them, it will strike a chord, of many different sorts, a sort of um, a little ping of recognition in much of what you say in the lives of most of us. They're very, Thank you can you. see they're both personal and yet universal. And I think that's, that's a, a really inspiring mix. And perhaps you'd like to read one of them for us now. I think you want to read something called A Strange Collection. Yes. It was a poem that I wrote for a competition uh, for pen to print and it won a second place on it. So I think uh, it's one of the, and it was the first poem I had tried in a very different format. I had always written in a very um, rhythmic poem, you know, like uh, it always had stanzas, it always had rhyming words. So this one was a sort of a free verse poem, which was my first. So that's why I felt it was a bit special. And that's why I'm reading that today. Interesting. So please go ahead. So it's called A Strange Collection. I collect hearts, broken hearts. In horror, you jump a mile from me and look at me aghast. Yes, it sounds awful, doesn't it? It may be a trying tale to tell, but tell I must. For this cannot be hidden, you know. I collect broken hearts. Truth be told, it's not as easy as it may sound. Not many are willing to trade them away. They keep them holding tight in their fist, as if it was gold that I had asked for. Or they try to hide it from sight, so sometimes it's difficult to know it's there. Or they try and convince me it's not broken at all, simply bruised. May have they're trying to persuade themselves? I collect broken hearts. Rummaging deep, sometimes, I find there are incalculable amounts to add to my collection. In every corner, in every junction, on every street, at every meet. And though they all come from different places, they all look the same. Crimson, shiny, broken. I collect broken hearts. You may ask what I trade in return. That's where the magic is, my friend. They can choose what they want. A listening ear, shoulder to cry on, someone to sympathize, empathy galore, laughter to share, burden to bear, someone to understand, a helping hand, a friend indeed, a hug that they need. Perchance my story you shall share, and foraging for my compendium, may become easier. Tell them I collect broken hearts. Very nice. Thank, Thank you. you. It's, um, as I said, there's there's a lot that resonates in that, that particular poem. And 
are most of the poems in the book from personal experience or, or do you no, put um, on different? Yeah, some are just inspired from uh, listening to people, some from world events, some would be just like a spark of an idea when, you know, just look, watching TV or reading another book or something like that. So it's different places inspiration comes from and there isn't one sort of set process that like, okay, no, it's this experience that I want to write about. It's from different different areas of life, really. Yeah, and the interesting thing about that poem is traditionally, of course, a poem, we assume that it will rhyme. Um, but I think one of the, the brilliant things you've done in your book is include a little instruction or a little education about yeah. this different stands of forms and so on and so forth. And perhaps you can start talking about a strange collection and what that's known as, and then a little bit of the difference. And perhaps we can read a more poem, poem um, which rhymes um, in, in contrast. Um. So, yeah, I was uh, of your uh, thought as well that, you know, um, uh, traditional poetry, and that's what I was taught in school as well, that it needs to have rhyming, it needs to have a certain amount of stanzas, and that's the rhymed poetry. But then as I was getting more into writing and more involved with different workshops, I found out that there were so many different different uh, uh, varieties of uh, poetry that you could get into. And what a strange collection is a free verse poem. Uh, that means it doesn't have a systematic rhythm or a systematic, uh, you know, ambic verse or anything like that. Mm -hmm. It's um, it's free verse. You can write however you want, however long you want, in whatever format you want. So that was a very interesting concept. But to still make it a poem and not a story or not a prose. So I had to get some kind of, so it was a word play and trying to, you know, um, uh, get that uh, poetic feeling across, but to make sure that it's not, you know, you know, any kind of uh, boundaries. Uh, so that was a pure free verse poem. And that's why I found, I wanted to read that because it was such a, uh, you know, it was a freeing uh, uh, concept when you actually just sit and you you can write without having to think about or oh, it needs to fall, fall into this pattern or it needs to have these many words or um, so it was very freeing uh, this poetry with re regards to giving instructions in the book because um, I I wanted this book not to just be uh, something to for people to read but also for people to learn because education is a big big deal for me. <laughs> So that's why I've included what kind of um, uh, different forms of formats of poetry I've included in the book. And these are just a few of them that I have used. With rhyme poetry, there are like different kinds of uh, poems you can do. Some have to have three stanzas, some to have five stanzas, some have a mixture of three stanzas and with a four stanzas, you know, some have a different rhyme scheme. And when I talk about rhyme scheme, that means like a A, B, A, which means the first and the third lines are rhyming or a -B, a, a, B, B, which means first, second are rhyming and third and fourth are rhyming. So it's very, um, uh, it's a beautiful uh, journey that poetry takes you through because it allows you to have that creative freedom, but yet explain things in such an easy and um, serene way that I find poems can tell you so much in so few little words. Yes, that's fascinating because the um, the rhythm of the words in a strange collection, I collect broken hearts, I collect mm -hmm. broken hearts, and you you can really feel what you're trying to put across there within that. And yet, when you look at it on the page, it looks like a paragraph within a prose story. And 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 yet, as you read it, you can see the rhythm is there in the yeah. words. Yeah. Um. And, and without the the traditional da 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 da. Yeah. But, so yeah. um. And does the subject matter of the poems that you are writing uh, suggest a form or is it something that you change as you're writing the poem? So when I was learning the poetry, I first thought of the form that I want to write and then thought of the subject that would fit the form. Because um, traditionally, I've always written the rhymed poetry, which was like, you know, 
four stanza poems with a very uh, rhythmic scheme. So it doesn't matter what scheme I've used, but that was my traditional way of writing poetry. But when I was researching these different kind of poems, I first thought, okay, this is the form that I want to use. Now let me think about what I can write about that would fit into this form. So it was the other way that I trained my brain to think about the form first so that I could learn the forms easily and then um, thought of the topics that I want to write about or the, the area that I want to write about. Right, right. So, so, so the form first, and then the words yeah. to, to fit the form. For me, that became yeah. yeah to learn it, learn the different forms. That became easier. That came yeah. easier. Yeah, yeah. So, and and perhaps the 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 fact that there is a standard form of poetry which is there, it it really helps poets such as yourself to be able to fit their their ideas into something. The, the having a structure to work within is probably a very good discipline, or you know, sort of um, force you into a way of thinking. So. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. So, for example, there is um, uh, there's a little short poem here, which I think is, um, I'm going to read, I like this one. Um, it's called uh, Let Her Dreams Fly. Mm -hmm. So this for me is one I like, so if you don't mind, I, I, I'll read that now. Please. Let her dreams fly. Give her a chance. Don't deny. There are barriers and there is bias, but there can be shattered bias. So let's make a change, you and I and let her dreams fly. Short, sweet, and very much to the point. I love the, the you know, there's there's a lot of rhyming going on in there. And there's in fact, you know, there is bias and bias. I think that's a very clever way of, of wordplay as well. Mm -hmm. And of course, I love the sentiment. You know, Don't hold anybody back, let them go. So, so we have these longer free form poems yeah. and the short poems um, and many different sorts. So, um, and, you say that you won a competition. Um, so is this something that you do a lot of? Was this a, a way that you found was um, a good entry point into the world of poetry writing? Yes, definitely. Uh, in uh, 2020, uh, 2021, I think I entered quite a lot of po poetry competitions. Um, I think I also did a lot of workshops basically. Um, so, you know, where you are, um, or lessons uh, or courses to learn about these different kind of poems. Um, I think it was a very good way of being disciplined and trying to write more because otherwise, you know, you tend life catches up and you don't have that time to spend. So when you know there is something you're entering or when you know it got, I got into the habit of actually then writing a lot more because of that. Yeah. And so if uh, somebody, one of our viewers is watching this and thinking, I've really got a, uh, an itch that I want to scratch about poetry writing, how would you say the best introduction to the 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 whole genre would be for somebody? Um, I think it would be firstly um, understanding the different kinds of poem, but mainly allowing yourself the creative freedom uh, to write what you can, because poetry can be very many different formats. It can be free words as well. You don't have to make sure every you know uh, word rhymes with something or it has to be in a certain whatever. So allowing yourself the creative freedom to write what you're feeling, firstly. Mm -hmm. Secondly, then attending a few courses and few workshops to say, okay, if I write this way, what does it mean? If I write the other, what would it mean? Allowing yourself that free time to just jot down ideas and, you know, uh, get those creative juices flowing. And then maybe entering competitions to see uh, where you're placed, which poetry is actually um, uh, liked by people, what ideas, um, you know, you can submit your poetry to magazines as well. And uh, I work for an organization called Pen to Print, um, like a volunteer with them. And they do, um, you can submit your poetry or your um, stories or any features to them as well, if you're a writer. And they, if, you know, it's, then the editors will pick it up and then uh, publish them on their website or a magazine as well. So there are various organizations where you can actually submit your work and see if you'll get published. Okay, interesting. Um, because poetry is not the only writing you do, I understand. I think you, you no. also write in other forms. <laughs> yeah, I do. I have a journal out as well and uh, a poetry book. I'm currently working on my next um, poetry uh, book as well as a nonfiction book. And in the line is a fiction book as well coming up. Gosh, yes. Um, so, yeah, so the words they, they they just keep on coming. Yeah. <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> and <laughs> have you um... get into it? It's easier because yeah, the first step is the most difficult always. But once mm -hmm. now you have become published and you know the route to it, and you're more confident in your work. I think the next books become easier. So yes, it's like I'm blocking a dam once you yeah, once you I start. Think, yes. It all flows, which is lovely. Yes, and, and it can't help but write because you're a writer. So. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yes, once you start, you can't stop. Yeah. And what is your physically, what form of writing do you take? Is it laptop? Is it pen and paper? Is it um, dictating? So, no, no, uh, it's it's actually a mixture of things because I do have a notes um, going on my phone because mm -hmm. um, I, uh, you know, in the middle of the night or if I'm somewhere out of bed, I always have got my phone with me. So I will probably jot down notes as well. Then on my iPad, I have an uh, iPad pencil because I do like the the thing about writing, but, mm -hmm. you know, in this well, pen and paper doesn't usually work because then you've got to translate it onto a computer. So I will write on the iPad, uh, basically, but then that will convert into notes. And then mainly it's the laptop for the heavy, serious editing work. It's the laptop. Yeah, yeah. So, oh, interesting. I hadn't thought of the, the iPad pencil replicating the pencil and, and yet immediately yeah, yeah. Okay. yet it's on the uh, on the ipad so it's easier to email across and so forth and then cut and paste it into my word documents yeah yeah, yeah. excellent that's the shorter work i can't do a long series on it because hmm. uh, it's it makes it easier if you're on the laptop to actually write properly yeah. and with all this writing and a full-time job and a, and a busy life do you find time for reading I do. I love reading. So every night before I sleep, I'll probably read for about half an hour, an hour. So that's the, uh, yeah. I think writing and reading go hand in hand. I don't think you can write without reading for some reason. It just, mm -hmm. not only it's a learning, but I think uh, it's the passion for the words, you know. So of course you're writing their your own words, but reading is like, I don't know, they, I feel they go hand in hand. <laughs> Absolutely, I would agree with you completely. That that um, reading, so you're surrounded by words, and 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 if you if it they get inside you and you want to bring them out in your own way, then, yeah. then that's how it works. And yeah. uh, uh, and I think that most of the volunteers at the library would agree that reading is a gateway into a whole world, or that you can't physically um, get into. Yeah. And I think that's the joy of it. It, it yeah. opens up um, oh, worlds, God. and yeah, and lots of ideas, and so on and so forth. So. Yeah. Um, uh, I think obviously very keen on reading altogether, um, but I think it helps people enter into worlds they can't do otherwise, and um, and then create their own worlds. Um, so it's a sort of cycle. Uh, so there's yeah. always, you know, there's a, only twenty six letters in the alphabet, but they can be put together in so many different ways that um, each of us has something that we can offer to the world of reading and writing. So. Um, so as again, perhaps you'd like to read another poem for us out of your collection. Um, um, I can read uh, the last one, which mm -hmm. is called Within a Box. This one was a very different um, format. It's a Villanella poem, which has got a very uh, systematic, like it's got to have three lines. Then the first and the third line of the first paragraph needs to be the last lines alternatively in the following paragraphs. And the last paragraph has to be four uh, lines. So it was a bit complicated to come. Sounds, sounds very complicated. It's very mathematical almost. <laughs> yeah, it was quite actually, but it, it was very much fun because you were like, it's also a challenge because you've got this idea that you want to put it down, but to put it down in that certain uh, frame, it was very... Uh, uh, it was very challenging, but yet very interesting. So I hope it's come out well. So within a box. Get fined and labeled within a box, in a space so narrow, so unkind, but I'm more than their limited thoughts. They judge and they design, like it unlocks who I am. But they can't see past the mold, can find and labeled within a box. But I won't resign myself to their talks. I'm not a copy nor a cliche, I'm unique. I'm more than their limited thoughts. I will find the way to walk my own blocks, to break free from the unref unrefined display, confined and labelled within a box. I'm inimitable, a treasure that shocks. Those who won't listen won't take in that. I am more than their limited thoughts. Let them define, let them knock, and I will keep shining my life beyond, for I am more than their limited thoughts can find and labeled within a box. Thank you. Thank you. I enjoyed that. 
I like this idea. Um, it's a, it's a, one of all. I think all of your poems um, they, they they all have meaning, um, and it's it's uh, something which touches everybody. Thank you. So I know that we have a copy in the library. Yeah. So um, please do come along. Visit the library. We're open on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays, morning and afternoon. We have many activities in the library as well. There's a knitting club on a Monday, rhyme time for reading to children on Tuesday mornings. We have Scrabble and board game on Thursday afternoons. Uh, we have crafting clubs on Saturday mornings for children. There are many events. There are many parties. Um, so do please come along if you're not already a member. Come along and see what we have to offer. Come and join. It's all for free. It's entirely community run. We also run on donations. And we welcome all. Uh, the world of reading leads to all sorts of paths that perhaps you wouldn't have seen yourself doing in times past, in times future. You may also be on this channel being interviewed by me with your poetry book or your nonfiction book or your fiction book. So thank you, Pella. I've really enjoyed talking to thank you. you. And so um, good luck with all your writing. And I look forward to the next volume. Thank you so much. And thank you to the North Har Harrow Community Library. And I would echo everything you said. It's a wonderful place to be. So, yeah, everyone should visit it, definitely. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.